A few hours from now, at about 2.15 Eastern Time, the Fed makes its long-awaited decision on the second round of quantitative easing, QE2. And it seems like there's only one real question left. How much cash will the Fed pump into the economy? But there is at least one more question, and it has to do with inflation. James Stock is a professor at Harvard University. He coined the term great moderation to describe a time of modest business cycles. He joins us now from Newton, Massachusetts. Professor Stock, it is an important question. Is the Fed underestimating inflation? Because the assumption here is that we are fighting deflation. Well, inflation is currently at quite a low rate. We're looking at inflation rates right now in the vicinity of 1% per year on a year-over-year -year basis. It's been heading down. There's tremendous slack in the economy with the unemployment rate at almost 10%. Historically, what that's meant is that meant, has meant that inflation is going to have continued downward pressure, that is, pressure on disinflation. So I think the concern has got to be avoiding a deflationary trap. Now, you have studied, though, inflationary patterns and found that over time they have been actually raised up. Does that suggest maybe that uh, the Fed is making some dangerous assumptions about what inflation is right now and what we may find out it really was uh, some months or years from now? Well, there's a couple of things in your question. First of all, one of the things has to do with data revisions, and there are always data revisions, and we're doing the best. Everybody does the best they can based on <clears throat> the murky information that's currently available. But in the bigger picture, what you're touching on is thinking about what the risks are that are involved. So let's think about those risks. Our, my view, our view, is that probably inflation is going to bottom out at somewhere around half a percentage point or 75 basis points, and that we probably won't get into a deflationary situation. We'll have a low rate of inflation for an extended period of time, but not deflation. But what if we're wrong? There's two possibilities. One is that we're over Overstate, that we're overstating the risks of deflation, in which case then maybe the Fed takes too much action, we find ourselves with 25 or 3 percent inflation, and the economy really takes off. Well, 25 or 3 percent inflation might be higher than we want. The economy taking off doesn't sound like such a bad thing. That doesn't sound like a bad outcome. Let's look at the other outcome. The other scenario, suppose things are actually worse than we think they are. Suppose we have some additional bad shocks. We get a situation where inflation is negative territory, deflation of 1 percent or 2 percent per year. Well, we could find ourselves in a Japan-like situation of a deflationary trap with low investment, high real rates of inflation real rates of interest and slow productivity growth because of slow capital formation for extended periods of time and slow job Professor, growth. I have so that's, only about that's a 30 terrible seconds situation. left. I want to squeeze in one last question, which is based on the yeah. scenarios that you just outlined, what's a better approach? The so-called shock and awe, all kinds of quantitative easing, tons of money flowing into the economy, or a more balanced incremental bit-by-bit -bit approach by the Fed? Well, inflation moves sluggishly, so I think that we have time to take an incremental approach. So I think at the moment, the current thing to do is to, quantitative, to do quantitative easing, which is what I expect the Fed would be doing today, and then to continue to revisit that and see if more quantitative easing is needed in the future. Professor, thank you very much. That's Professor James Stock of Harvard University, the man who coined the term great moderation, even if he says it's more a matter of luck than anything else.